on the way out to drive tanks. Check out the ground behind me. It's littered with fallen victims. There's a lot of people here. So the range is getting ready to go hot. There's very little surplus here, unfortunately. There was a couple guys with some pretty cool guns. There was a fellow with a trench gun and a 1917 infield bayonet on it. We had a dude with a Mauser broom handle with a stock holster yeah, and cool. a uh, scoped M1. But other than that, it's mostly all modern firearms, which I enjoy, but it's not really what the channel's about. So we're going to see if anything else cool comes up later. If not, at least it would be the cool vehicles. We're about halfway through range day. It's been really fun. Yeah, it's been a blast. I believe this is a Sherman. I'm not a expert in uh, heavy equipment, but I think that's what we're in front of here. We got to check out all the booths and we pulled the trigger on quite a few guns today. Definitely got to try out some stuff I've been wanting to for a long time. The Century MP5 clones. They have one here that's in full auto and definitely like my favorite gun I've shot since I'm a huge MP5 nerd anyway. I had some of the Century Arms AKs as well. And one of them was full auto. We got to shoot it. It was really nice. Any day where you're shooting full autos is a good day but apparently there's still more fun to come. And I think that does it for range day at the Gundy's. They're very graciously treating us to beer and barbecue. So I'm excited about that after a long day at the range. I'm tired. We haven't sat down once today. No, we have not. We had to shoot a lot of awesome guns. We saw some stuff get blown up, mini guns going off, full auto, H and K, ARs, silence, MP5s. It's been amazing. And the music just started, so I think we gotta go. And the Gundy's is a wrap. We didn't do much talking about Gundy's Day 2 because we were too busy doing activities. We kind of knock a bunch of stuff off the bucket list this trip, from seeing really cool firearms that I've always wanted to get my hands on, to riding on tanks. We went on a safari, daytime and nighttime with thermal optics and night vision. The place that was hosted was Drive Tanks, which is on Ox Ranch. And Ox Ranch is just a big wild game facility but also they host a bunch of refugee animals and they just give them a place to live and everything and so we got to do that as a safari and that was really cool. Ox Ranch turned out to be one of the coolest places I've ever been to. It has this Jurassic Park feel to me Yeah. and I don't know it's just because that's the way the motif is kind of set up or the fact that it's you know this giant ranch with exotic animals on it apparently owned by some eccentric crazy person but ox ranch is really cool it's something that we never would have been able to do if we were footing the bill for it so i'm thankful for the gundies for inviting me out so i can experience all that with spending as little money as possible travel expenses were still not cheap but if we had to have travel expenses and pay for all the activities on ox ranch I would be out a ton of money. Day two consisted of an expo in which we got to interface with a lot of firearms community people, companies, you know, other creators. I don't really think a lot of the business that was going on at the Gundy's is really gonna be applicable to our channel, but we did make a couple contacts that might pan out to make for some fun videos. The majority of the channels that participate in the Gundy's are for modern firearms, and of course we really don't do that on readiness reviews. So our niche doesn't fit exactly, but it's most definitely still adjacent. After the expo, it was time for the actual award ceremony. And that was pretty cool. It was my first ever red carpet event. Don't know if we'll ever do anything like that again. So I guess it's cool to at least have one of those in your life. And they provided food and drink and fun. It was a good time. It was really great. We got to meet and see a lot of big YouTubers and influencers in the gun world. I got to meet Don Operator. That was really good. I shook his hand and told him I love his YouTube videos. And that was pretty cool. The AK King, Brandon Herrera was there. Clip from Classic Firearms was making the rounds the whole time we were there. I got to speak with him for just a moment. The award ceremony for the Gundies was a cool experience. And I'm glad that I got to attend, but to be honest, 
I'm not really keyed into that world. I knew less than a quarter of the channels that got nominated for the individual categories. But I guess now I have to do my homework to figure out who those channels are and what they do to kind of piece all the parts together. It was really cool to go up to the Henry booth and shoot some of their new lever actions. 4570 Governor and All Weather. And that was really fun. It's the first time I shot a 4570. Uh, I think for you too, right? Yep. They had a 357 mag that also shot 38 specials and they had a can on it it was so quiet it was like shooting a pellet rifle and that was very interesting because that was the first time shooting a silencer on a like hunting rifle that was really cool to shoot something like that and it make hardly any sound and almost no recoil at all in the h and k booth they had the m110 a1 probably the best shooting rifle by far out of everything we shot on range day they had their whole line of h and k handguns those were really nice h and k was working with a company called digital trigger and they had a really interesting trigger group that they designed for the ar-15 platform century arms was there they were with Canik. They had a whole array of their handguns. So I've always had a pretty high opinion of Canik. I've considered them a high value option. Even though I've never owned one myself or even shot one myself, just from watching other people's reviews, I know nothing fancy is a big fan of the Canics, uh, for the price especially. I was actually kind of disappointed in what I saw from Canik because those things were jamming. And I saw a lot of malfunctions from the Canik booth, and that was very surprising to me. Of course, Century Arms does the importation for Canik, so those two booths were basically together as one. Century's rifle offerings, though, were awesome. Their MP5 clone is something that I am bent on adding to the collection. I think it's the best semi-auto MP5-like firearm that you can get for the money, probably. There's a little bit of a price variance on how much those are, but I know I've seen them as low as about a thousand. It just depends on which individual model it is. And from what we experienced with the full auto version, they shoot fantastically. Circling back to the Henry booth, I really liked that 4570 all weather. That's a really awesome gun, but far too expensive for my pocketbook. I don't ever picture myself buying a modern Henry lever gun. They're just too much money, and I have other firearms that can fill the same purpose. When looking at modern firearms, that's what I'm always thinking about is what niche is it going to fill? Because I don't really collect modern firearms. I use them. I see modern firearms as a tool. I think they're really cool but it's not something that I'm trying to accumulate a lot of. I want them to fill a certain purpose though. A lever action 4570 doesn't really serve a purpose that I need to fill, but that doesn't change my enthusiasm for the platform and how cool those guns are. To me, one of the most interesting and fun things at range day was Firebird targets. Firebird is making these sticky targets that are reactive, they explode. They're not tannerite, so it's not a binary explosive. From what they were explaining to me, it's actually like a pyrotechnic charge and they are a lot safer than tannerite or some other kind of binary explosive. They are very conveniently packed in these little circles with 3M adhesive to them so you can stick them to anything. They have a nice little concussive glass. They throw out a little fireball, but apparently they're pretty darn safe. And to me, the coolest thing is their affordability. They were saying the MSRP on a 10 pack was like 20 to 25 dollars they ranged in like different sizes they had like a 50 mil to a 65 mil and then they had some that were reflective for uh, infrared they had an array of different types of targets for different applications the guys at firebird were cool to talk to and they said that it was a possibility that they could get some product out of the channel for us to shoot with mil serps and i think that would be a really fun video i definitely like to test their product with my guns brownells was there they brought the brn 180 and that was my first time getting a chance to shoot that gun and it performed well it didn't really make me want to run out and buy a VRN-180, but I still thought it was a nice firearm. Dylan Precision was there with their minigun, and we were literally standing right next to it during the Mad Minute. That is an amazing piece of kit. How much ammo do you think Dylan expelled in range day? I don't know. They held the button down for almost a solid minute during Mad Minute. However, if your rounds that spits out a minute, there's thousands and thousands and thousands dollars for the ammunition fired for that. So I think the mini gun is about 3,000 rounds a minute. Throughout the day, they shot many thousands of rounds because they were doing bursts here and there. The rate of fire at the mini gun is just ridiculous. It's, it's, it is a show in itself. Yeah, it really is. It makes everybody just get quiet and just a big smile on their face just to watch that thing go. At the end of the mad minute, we got to watch a tank fire off the round. That was a sight to see. That was really cool. And an RPG. The RPG was actually a lot louder than I thought it would be. 
So our whole trip here to the Gundy's has definitely been a bucket list item for me. We got to experience so many cool things, things that we probably would never be able to experience otherwise. This event has sort of changed my mind a little bit on going to things like this. It's kind of got me jazzed up to try to go to some other industry events, especially the IV8888 Range Day. They hold that in Georgia, and I'm going to do my best to work our way onto the list for that this year. That'll be a shit that's a lot more Milserp centric, and I think it'll line up with our channel's content a little bit better than the Gunnies did. Also, I'm a huge IV8888 fan, always have been. I know that I've been subscribed to his channel since before he had a thousand subscribers, and now he's up in the millions. So being able to shoot at Eric's event would be really huge for me personally. If you ever get the opportunity to go out to the Ox Ranch to experience all that it offers, definitely worth it. I'd say do it. It's one of the coolest places I've ever been. The Drive Tanks crew are outstanding. Those guys busted their butt the entire time. They were very accommodating. We were there for free and they treated us great. I can only imagine if you're actually paying for that place, what kind of treatment you get from Drive Tanks and the Ox Ranch. Their whole operation is super impressive. This whole trip to the Gundys has really turned out to be the best bachelor party I could have ever hoped for. And that's kind of the way I've been looking at this the whole time. I really can't imagine that I could have done any anything more cool for the same amount of money anywhere in the United States. I know this video was sort of meandering and disjointed, but I suppose travel videos can just be that way. If you like the video, don't forget to hit it with a thumbs up to help it out with that algorithm so other people can see it. Subscribe to the channel to catch all of our future content and to see more footage from the 2023 Gundies. I want to say one more big thank you to you guys for the nomination. It really would have been possible without you, and we will catch you in the next video. See you then. Peace.